and you can move it left or right if you're you know, losing too much of his head here. You could do that. So, but of course, people aren't symmetrical, so you probably don't want to do that. Um, now to clean this one up, it'd just be a simple matter of grabbing this little piece here, Control Shift A, and that'll grow all contiguous vertices. So all of this garbage here will be deleted if you do geometry modify topology delete hidden. Um, these edges down here, you know, I should have gotten rid of this. Oh, that's just barely hanging on there, isn't it? Let's do let's do a little manual cleanup along these edges here. We'll delete hidden. And again, I don't really don't care about those edges. So what I can do is just duplicate this dude off. And we'll go ahead and, you know, I'm just going to run my macro. Polish your polygrid borders. You can mask by border. Um, actually, let's do a little bit better job than that. So we'll go mask by border. And we're going to grow that mask. And we're going to invert that mask. And we're just going to do a deformation. Polish by features. Open hole. And that'll just polish that polygrid border out a bit. You're losing some detail along that border, but oh well. And any help I can give it, I will. We'll go ahead and delete hidden. So now on this duplicate here, we can just zero mesh this, uh, or you can close holes and dynamesh it. But if you want to work with lower subdivision history, which I think is useful when you're dialing in details and stuff, we can just go to zero mesher, depth of size down to maybe 22, target polygon count of five is fine. We'll just zero mesh this. And hopefully it has some. I feel weird saying this, but hopefully it has some, um, it's a word I'm looking for. Hopefully it has some errors so we can fix those. Um, cool. A wire had to be used to hold the clay on the base. Good to know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, the thing on his back was, yeah, so when you have an armature, um, it'll be like a post and a little arm will come out and that goes into like usually the lower back or the middle of your mesh and then you have a wire armature that you can twist off and stuff. So that's where that little pokey thing was. So now we have our zero mesh here. And now it's just a matter of if you if you did want to close holes, let's make sure we're just getting contiguous meshes here. Cool. Uh, we'll just do a quick close hole operation. And if you want to, we can do Let's do control shift and that'll put in another edge ring and then we will E scale this in a little bit. Give us a little bit of breathing room here. Let's do E, which is scale, and I'm going to do control shift. That'll give us our edge ring. That's what I'm looking for. And now we can use move to kind of bring this in a little bit and then we can kind of pull this down a bit. And now what I can do is do grab this one here, do Control Shift X to expand, Control W make Control W. Oh, Control W make that all one poly group. So now all my clean mesh that I want to project to is here, and all this I don't really care about. So now what I can do, go out of solo mode. Uh, we have our guy here. We have them both visible. Go into solo mode again because it's still visible. It'll still project. Isolate that one. Sub tool project all, and go ahead and increase our poly group. Control D to dyna, uh, to, to, am I still got something masked here? Unmask. Okay, let's do this again. Crease polygroup. Isolate. Project all. Control D. Isolate. Let's go ahead and grab this one. Project all. Control D. Isolate. Project all, and then bring everything back, and we'll do one more. Control D, isolate, project all. So now we have one contiguous mesh with subdivision history, so if we want to dial down and sculpt at a lower resolution, we can. And we'll give this a minute, and then we'll check for any errors we might have. So here's our uh, new one. And if we're in Solomo, here's our original scan. Here's our new one. It did a damn good job. Not a whole lot. We're losing a little bit of resolution here, it looks like, which again is mostly just a resolution issue. We can just subdivide that one more because this one here is 600,000 points. Now we're up to 1.9. Not ideal, but oh well. We'll do another projectile. Good morning, Hired Gun. Thanks for showing up. Uh, Axel, how do you deal with a hollow object when Dynamesh makes artifacts on the thinner spots? Um, 
that would be, yeah, if you've got a thin object, yeah, I'll show you that in just a second. But basically when you have a thin object and you're sculpting and sometimes if you have back, back face masking off, it'll pull through your back faces and then when you dynamesh it looks webbed. So one important thing is just to make sure you have back face masking on for all your brushes here. Let's make sure we're in good shape here. So we're in solo mode, scan, new one. Don't need that scan anymore. I guess we can leave it in there. There we go. So now we've got this thing. We have subdivision levels. We can drop back down and just sculpt our way up. Um, again, any any fixes you want to make, you can just use your Z project brush. Let's see if we got any. Yeah, no real errors here, man. Good enough. So anyway, Z project brush and it just sculpt out any problems you might have. Another reason to have instead of just going to a super high resolution Dynamesh and sculpting, is the ability to. You know, if I hold down shift and we smooth, it's going to be like, oh, okay, I want to smooth this thing out. And you're like, oh, smooth, smooth, smooth. Oh, it takes forever. You can go over here to your smooth brush modifiers, and you're going to see a weighted smooth mode. If you go to one, it's stronger. Or you can just go to brush, smooth, stronger. If you don't have that, you can go into your brushes here with ZBrush. And if you go to the smooth uh, folder, You've got uh, smooth, all sorts of different smooths in here, and all those, all these different smooth brushes are just basically smooth modifiers being adjusted here. Um, but with smooth stronger, you can smooth stronger, um, but it's still a little bit limiting. What I'd rather do is go down to like subdivision level two and just, you know, smooth out any major stuff I don't like, or you know, shouldn't be there, like probably this clay chunk here. Go ahead and get rid of that, and then as I subdivide up, it's just so much easier at a lower resolution to smooth those things out than it is to try and wrangle those things on the highest resolution, you know, like trying to do this. Just go down a couple and then smooth it out. Much easier. And then you go back up. Super easy to just kind of clean that up. So as far as the thin meshes we were talking about, if we have, for example, a cube 3D, make a poly mesh. 